Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sophie and I'm the founder of Agnes London. I upload new videos each week on sewing, DIY, upcycling and sustainable living. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made this super easy little play suit. So a few weeks ago, I was watching some videos over on Rosary Apparel and I noticed that she had this really easy to follow technique for creating a jumpsuit. So I decided that I would try it out as I wanted a little easy to wear summer play suit. You don't need any pattern paper, you don't need any experience pattern cutting or pattern drafting. So it's a great technique if you are new to making your own clothes and want to give an easy to follow method a go. I'm quite happy with how my play suit turned out and I can't wait to show you how I made it. So here I've got about two meters of the tensile fabric that I'm using, matching colored thread, my fabric scissors, my workings out, all the measurements on, my pattern master, and I've got some measuring tape as well. So the first measurement I'm going to do is I'm gonna measure all the way around to my hips and we're just gonna mark that measurement on the fabric. I'm using my pattern master to get nice straight angles. Next up, I need to measure how wide I want the play suit to be at the top and then I'm halving that measurement and drawing that out. Then I'm measuring how long I want the play suit to be. So I think I went for about 75 centimeters and I'm also marking that out on the fabric as well. It's possibly better to go for a bit longer as you can always shorten it once you've tried it on. Mine ended up quite short, so I probably should have added another five centimeters on. Next up, I'm gonna measure how far my waist is from where I want the top of the jumpsuit to be. And I'm now marking that on. and then I'm taking that measurement all the way out to the width and then I'm creating a curve for under the armhole. But the next measurement I need to take is how far down I need the crotch seam to be. So I'm just measuring that on myself and marking it on. And then from there, I'm marking five centimeters out to the side and five centimeters up. And again, drawing another curve to match up these two points. And then taking that back. Then I'm just finishing off and I'm adding a seam allowance on. So I got a little bit confused here and couldn't really work out where I'd added a seam allowance and where I needed it to. So probably should have added one all the way around just to be safe. And then I'm cutting it out. So for the back, I'm using exactly the same measurements, except for rather than doing five centimeters for the curve on the crotch, I'm just doing 10 centimeters. So it gives me a bit of a deeper curve. So I'm using Taylor's chalk, my half a meter ruler, and also my pattern master as well to help me get this as accurate as possible. Taylor's chalk rubs off the fabric really easily. So this is a really good method if you don't have a pattern to be able to create a garment from scratch. Next up, I'm creating these straps so I'm just cutting two rectangles 50 centimeters by 12 centimeters these are going to create the shoulder straps and I also cut out some bias strips to create the little loops for them to loop through at the top of the play suit and then I've decided I'm going to add some pockets to this play suit as well so I've measured how wide the play suit legs are at the front and I'm just sketching out a square pocket with curved edges at the bottom leaving myself enough room to fold it over twice at the top and then allow for a centimeter seam allowance so to begin with I decided that I would French seam the play suit I decided this would be the neatest way to finish the edges. So I'm just sewing with a half a centimeter seam allowance. I'm just sewing the center front together and then I'll join the center backs together as well. So to do a French seam, I'm sewing with a half a centimeter seam allowance with the wrong sides together. Once I've sewn that one up, I'm gonna trim that seam allowance down, turn it the other way around. So the right sides are together and then sew another half a centimetre as well. This means that all your raw edges are enclosed and you shouldn't see any of them from the outside. It's a really nice, neat way to finish a seam and it's quite easy as well because you don't need anything else but your sewing machine. Alternatively, I could have overlocked the seam or bound the edges or something like that. But to be honest, I think this is the easiest and quickest way of doing it. So I'm doing the same with the centre back now just sewing half a centimetre and then I'll trim that down and turn it through the other way. Once I've attached the centre front and the centre back and French seamed them, I'm then going to do the same with the side seams as well. Again, putting the wrong sides together first. 
so now I'm just trimming down my seam allowance. If you don't do this, you can end up with furry seams from the outside, so it's always good to try and trim down your seam allowance before finishing off the French seam. And then I'm putting the right sides back together and finishing off the French seam on the side seams. Next up, I'm just gonna make the little loops to go on the front. So I've got my bias strips and I'm just gonna fold them in half and sew half a centimetre seam allowance again all the way down. And then, as I showed you in my last video, I'm gonna use the trusty safety pin technique to turn these inside out. There we are, and they've got a little bit of stretch in them. Next up is the straps. So again, I'm just folding them in half and sewing with a half a centimetre seam allowance all the way down. And then because these are a little bit wider, I didn't need the safety pin, I was able to turn these inside out with my hands. And then I just folded the edge over a couple of times on one side and then just stitched that down just to finish off the edge of the tie straps. And then pressed both of those. Next up is the pocket. So I'm taking the top of the pocket, folding it over a centimetre or a half, and then again another centimetre and a half. And then I'm just top stitching that down on both sides. Now I'm finishing all the raw edges of the play suit. So with the top, what I've done is the same as the pockets. I've just folded it over a centimetre and a half, and then again, and I've just stitched along the edge. Apologies for the focus here. I thought I was in focus, but as you can see, I'm really well focused on my shoulder currently. And then for the sides of the play suit, so underneath the arms, I'm just roll hemming. So I'm just turning over once and turning over again. So it's a little bit fiddly. You have to keep stopping and readjusting as you go along, but it's a very effective way to finish off the edge of the seam, especially in a lightweight fabric. Now that's the play suit pretty much done. So I also attached the crotch seams as well. Unfortunately, my camera battery had died at that point, but I just did them the same as I've done for all the other seams. And then for the hem at the bottom of the shorts, I have roll hemmed them as well. So the only two seam methods we're really using in this video is roll hemming and French seaming. And now to attach the straps. So I'm attaching the thicker straps to the back and then the little loops to the front. So I'm just gonna pin them in place where I want them and then I'm just gonna stitch them down. I'm gonna try and follow the top stitching I've already done so you can't see much additional stitching from the outside. So I'll do two rows of stitching on each one, trying to get them as secure as possible. There you are, that's what they look like from the outside and then the inside. Now for the straps at the back. Again, just pinning them into place, both at each corner of the back and the front, so they're as wide as they can go. So I stitched the strap down to the lowest top stitching to begin with, so it's facing down, and then I folded it over itself so it's facing out, and stitched it down where the top row of top stitching was, so that the unfinished edge would be enclosed. Hopefully that makes sense. Sorry, it's not clearer on the video. Now to tie those up. Such a simple way to attach straps to this style of play suit and I really like the look of it as well. So now that's done, I'm gonna pin the pockets in place. So this is probably the most technical part of making this play suit. And again, I'm really sorry that it's not that clear to see. So I'm just lying them flat and trying to get them as straight as possible with the hem and with the center seam as well. As you can see, only the top part of this pocket has been finished. So I'm gonna to have to stitch the pocket down and finish it and enclose all the raw edge as I go. So I'm just turning the edge over one centimeter, stitching a few millimeters in from the edge of the pocket. And the hardest part here was the curve. I probably shouldn't have done curved pockets, but somehow it turned out all right, but it was quite fiddly. So I'm having to keep stopping and turning the seam allowance over with my fingers. And when I get to the end of the first row, I'm leaving my needle in, pivoting the fabric around and then going back down to do the second row of stitching. About half a centimetre away from the first row of stitching. Again, a great view of my shoulder here. Making sure that I back tack at the beginning and the end of my pocket so my pocket is nice and secure. So that's one done, doesn't look too bad. Now to try and get the next one looking exactly the same. So it is finished. I'm actually happy with it, although there are definitely a few things that I would change. So I've actually got a belt around it at the moment, but that's what it looks like. 
if I take the belt off, then it's baggier. So I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I think this method is probably, is actually a really useful one if you don't have a pattern and you are not confident pattern cutting because it does make sense. I think I messed up a few of my calculations. For example, I was wearing jeans, so I measured my waist measurements to where my jeans came to, was in reality, I would probably like this seam to close up a little bit higher and this seam to close up a little bit higher as well. So it's not so baggy, but I could just shorten the strap, which would make it less baggy through the back. Yeah, so I think the method is really effective and I think as the weather gets a bit cooler, I'll probably make myself a jumpsuit using the same method, especially now I've tried it out and I know where I need to add a little bit more fabric and stuff. I think when I was doing it, I was getting quite confused with where, how much seam allowances I was adding where. You could also make a little pinafore dress the same way, uh, obviously just not drawing in the curve for the inner leg seams. I think if I were to do it again, or if I were to make myself a jumpsuit, I would add a bit more fabric into the legs because at the moment the shorts part is quite snug on my legs. However, I think that this fabric will stretch. It has that feel about it. So that's not like worrying me too much at the moment. Also, I'm not 100% sure about the pocket positioning. I don't know, I feel like they're maybe a little bit too low. It might look weird if you put stuff in them. Yeah, I feel like the pocket positioning might be a little bit too low, so maybe if I do it again, I would just do a bigger pouch up here and not do pockets on the front of my legs, or maybe I'd put them on the back of the legs as instead. But otherwise, it's really comfy, the fabric is so nice, and I'm pretty happy with how it turns out. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever tried anything like this or if you were going to give it a go. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. It's a really nice, easy one if you are a beginner sewer and you're not quite confident with patterns and how pattern cutting works yet. It's a nice, easy intro to it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and it has inspired you to have a go at making your own clothes. And feel free to tag me if you do try it at Agnes Sundin. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss another video. I upload new videos every week on sewing, DIY, sustainable living, that kind of thing. So go and hit the subscribe button. And also, if you don't already, go and follow me on Instagram at Agnes London as I share more about my products, workshops and sustainable living, etc. Thank you for watching. I will see you next week with another video.